Hello, this is Everett Pierce, January the 25th, 2017, it's 11.50 a.m. Now this is part two of Sunset of Knowledge, and we're going to move fairly quick in this as to sunsets. Sunsets with a lot of people is beautiful. I think the same thing is, but there's more that meets the eye in depth more than it's on the horizon the sun as we know when the sun when it gets on the horizon then it seems as if it's moving really fast okay it comes to a, a element that we all seven billion people are going to have to address in reference to extinction now I meant mentioned extinction is our true enemy but our true enemy is not necessarily what we depict and place upon Lucifer. I mean, this horrible, gruesome thing is, and I call it the clone concept. Is you put your clone or perfume on, and then 30 minutes later, give or take, you don't smell it anymore. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Is you get desen desensitized in that respect. Well, extinction loves that. You wouldn't think that's gruesome. You wouldn't think that's the devil. You wouldn't think that's demonized. But how does that play a role into essentially your extinction? And it has many tools available. So when you watch a sunset, is so in a sense, the sun is going away. Now why is it that we see abundance, and I mean abundance, that when people get the true essence, or it hits home as they say, is when something is taken away so when that sun's going away then you say wow isn't that pretty and say wait a minute he had all freaking day that sun has been all around you and you wait until a sunset to really appreciate it okay well that leads into other human behaviors why is it that a, a loved one a person has to die to realize or the impact the loss of a loved one the appreciation of it and then you say oh man if I just spent some more time with my mom or if I just spent more time with my dad my brother or whoever died and at that point is when you it really hits home to you as you've been taking life for granted in the same way with money or no money or food you could put many objects in there that people get desensitized and the numbness of it. That is the characteristic and what I talk about in terms of extinction. That's how it kills you. You don't see it coming. So you can rest assured if you see me, you know extinction is on the horizon. Well you have a democracy. It's either extinction or an evolutionary reset. It means you go back to the beginning. Now as we see in our schools if Johnny doesn't pass the requirements, the teacher is required to hold him back, start him all over again. What do you think you got those concepts? Okay, the cycling, the day and night. These are all constant reminders to everyone here that if you don't get with the program, is you're going to run into some unfavorable things, and many of those things you're not going to be able to see okay or you you are able to see but you get caught up in your own routine of things and you get off your path or distracted or diverted and then and then you find yourself in a position where we see this a lot okay it's like global you know to be nice to our, our mother earth why is it that death or extinction has to be knocking on your door and you say, oh, oh, okay, okay, we'll clean up our air. Okay, we'll clean up air. Okay, everybody clean up the streets. Hurry up, hurry up. Jesus Christ, hurry. Okay, now I'm exaggerating, of course, but that poses a problem. Why do you have to be in that predicament before you'll, you don't even think about it? And see, we, I have seen with a lot of people 
And I say, well, let's go, let's go to the park and then help those guys clean up. Well, why should I do that? I ain't getting paid for it. Maybe because you want to have a little respect for the area in which you live in. And I was like, that poses a problem too. You mean that you have to be paid to do anything. God forbid you advance further on and expect the government have to pay you to get out of your bed and to use the toilet. Because our government's not going to do that. You'll just have to lay in your bed with full of poop. Now, I'm exaggerating there, but there's also partial truth to this because what I've seen of some people. You know, it's not to be derogatory or put anyone down. But see, that's why I am a leader of leaders, president of president, general of generals. I have lived and I have developed all those positions. That's why in our companies, you have a district manager, you have a supervisor. It's because they have experience in many different facets of their company. Well, in terms of energy, you're not going to find anyone more experienced in the field of energy than three people. Well, there's me, the Alpha Prime, positive, negative, negative, positive. There's Lucifer, who's a negative, positive Alpha Prime. And then, of course, God. And believe it or not, the three, one factor, three is about life and one isn't in terms of the symbolism in our, our currency. You know, the eagle's holding 13 arrows, 13 fig leaves, leaves, 13, 13 original colonies. So, even extinction is part of that. Okay, but extinction says, hey, I didn't want to be created. It's just like you and me, has a personality, it thinks, as a process, as a consciousness, but in a different form of energy. So if I show you a picture of Lucifer, and he's taken on the shape of fire, you say, wow, well, that scared a lot of people, and especially the natives. They, they, not really so much scared, but it's like, something is like, I'm looking at something that defies logic. We, we see people as human. Why is he taking a human shape in fire, in water, earth elements? So we have to address these issues. And we won't have no choice when we, once we enter the second level of leadership. Because that is what is going to lead you to fast track of extinction. I don't say this because Everett just wants, he's saying all these words and he just likes to hear himself talk. No, I get tired that you figure our evolutionary reset is four billion years. Four billion years. You know, with this election, Hillary was saying, well, we are already great. Really? Okay, theory of relativity. I'm looking back, okay, four billion years. In the last 500 years, out of the four billion, four and a half billion, you finally pulled your head out of your ass, pardon the expression, and started evolving and being the awesome that you are. First of all, why did it take you four billion years to wake up? Now, some of that, you know, some of the delay in there is part of the evolutionary process. You know, so when you when it gets to like a, a billion years, and you're like, really? Wow. And it's two billion, and then there's three billion. I was like, wow. What's so now? I'm as a problem solver. I have to figure out is why is it taking nearly four billion years for people to really exert, identify, develop, and fine-tune themselves. So when you look back in the last 500 years of the progress that we made, now it depends on who's viewing what is great. And I look back and I say, wait a minute. Because I say, well, ever you, you know, that's, there's no proof to that. Well, that's why they try to get people to believe there's no reincarnation. Why? Because if there's reincarnation, then now you have to look at the whole picture. And then it makes you look so freaking pathetic. Why did you wait four billion years to decide to do something? I mean, like I was ex expressing earlier, 
Why does death have to be on your doorstep to say, oh my God, the, the manager's here. Or the, mm, or the supervisor. Mm. But the message is clear. That poses a huge problem. Because it brings about unnecessary things. And, when, you know, let's just say you don't want extinction on your resume. Because you'll be in a museum next to T-Rex in the Raptor. Wondering how in the hell you got there. Because it snuck up, or snuck up on you. Just like the clone. If that clone... You know, it's like greatness. You know, well, or you the know, United States is already great. You know, this world is already great. Well, if you had a beer-infested burrito fart, and it could talk, it's saying, hey, don't I smell good? And then other people are saying, oh, oh hell no. So it depends on <laughs> one's perception. So if you think this is great, you guys... You guys are still developing. You're still evolving. That's why when I see people and they think they're smart and pious and like they really know it all. And I'm thinking back from this perspective and I'm like, you don't even have a clue. Other than you given, have learned this skill set of giving this illusion that you've really accomplished something. You're just, you have, you have a tip off of a tip of an iceberg. And you had, I can see, taking four billion years as some things has to be in place before evolution has to move on. But, and as we see today, in 2017, people are scared. Um, why fear? The fear of the unknown. And then too, you have people, like I said earlier, it's like, oh, if you evolve, that means you've got to do some work. God forbid you got to do some work. God forbid you got to get out of your bed and take your own self to the toilet so you don't crap yourself. God forbid. You know, and it's like, when you see all these telltale signs, you say, well, that's the symptom of the problem. You know, there's always that cardinal rule. Whatever your problem is, you can always lead it. You, you first perceive it as a symptom and then try to find the source of the problem. And in a lot of cases, you'll find that you'll get what you think is the source. And then when you look at it and you say, wait a minute, that's still a symptom. So where is the source problem? That's how you fix things. That's how you permanently fix things where it's forever stuck in a book and you're not living it. You're putting monogamy in your evolution versus your relationships. So if you want to take out unnecessary things and say, oh, I like monogamy, you know, it's one man, one woman, you're still evolving. How in the hell do you even remotely think what you know and what you believe is correct? You're just starting to evolve in the last technically 500 years out of 4 billion. Take a deep breath, relax a little bit. Pardon the expression, try not to be so anal. And I, this applies to all people. We have to be humble ourselves. A lot of people don't like doing that. You see, if you humble yourself and say, oh, reincarnation does exist because this ever never seems to go away anywhere. I've had many names. Albert Einstein. Mr. Lincoln. Washington. Jesus. That's just a few in terms of historically. Now, I've also been in part of man's timeline that didn't quite make books, but Nine out of ten times, I love the idea. And in fact, as an Alpha Prime, I have to make some history. Because when I get reincarnated, I have to be able to do self-discovery of myself. Is I have to know this. Why? Because if you're struggling and you're taking four billion years to advance, I have to find out what is keeping you to take so long to get anything done. You know, if I could speed it up by one billion years, can you imagine, I mean, this is what I'm doing in one lifetime. Can you imagine if I had four and a half billion years of what I can accomplish? And if I was to take you all, and, and one day, God willing, of course, 
That's what they say in Islam, God willing, inshallah. If I was to take you all to the seventh heaven, in terms of the design of it and the structure of it, you know, and you take all the people there, the talented individuals that earn to be there, and you say, wow, this is all designed and put together by one person. So, anyways, we'll end it right there. But we're going to elaborate on this sunsets, the sunset of knowledge. With that, thank you for your time and Godspeed.